Hi, welcome back to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishnan. In this episode, we're going to discuss about white balance. It's very important, but for some reason is always taken for granted. Uh, maybe because we don't understand it well enough or we think that it is not very important because currently the trend is let's fix it in the post. To understand white balance, we also need to understand color temperature. The human brain has this fantastic ability to understand color no matter what kind of conditions they see things. They see white as white even in the evening, night or day in green light or white light. Human brains, eye sees it and the brain decodes it and tells you that this is the color. Unfortunately, cameras of all generations, old, new and probably the one which is going to come in the future, they don't have the kind of ability that the human brains have. Hence, you need to tell the camera what is white and the camera then sees everything in relation to that particular point and that's called the white balance. In all possibility, it was a scientist and not a photographer who invented the term color temperature and they assigned a value of 5500 degree Kelvin. Kelvin was the unit in which, in, in which color temperature is expressed because Kelvin is the unit of temperature. The 5500 degree Kelvin temperature represented the color temperature of mid-noon sun right above your head. No clouds, nothing. And the values lower indicated a light which is warmer and the higher values indicated the temperature of a cooler light. The photographer is supposed to tell the sensor or the camera the, the, the type of lighting conditions under which he is shooting. Only then the camera will understand the light in the way it is supposed to and will reproduce the colors in the way it is supposed to. By doing this technique called white balancing your camera, you are telling the camera, look, this is my white. Once it understands the white correctly, then it start reading all the other colors with relation to that particular point. In a modern digital camera, there are more than one way to achieve a right white balance. And there are also a few other methods using a third party product to achieve and to override this in camera white balancing. So we're going to split this video into two. In the first video, we're going to see the methods which are provided in the camera. And in the second video, we're going to see how we can use a third party product effectively to achieve a better white balance. So as usual, let's get into action. Before I actually start shooting, let me tell you that uh, getting the in-camera white balancing correct is very important and very critical for the JPEG and the TIFF shooter. Not so much for the RAW shooter because he has that control while processing those images in his RAW processing software. So as usual, we have an uncomplicated uh, setup, very simple. Uh, our favorite D850, one lens, um, tethered uh, using a tether cable onto our computer. We have a white light, a daylight balance light. We have a, a tungsten light and we also have a flash. So let's get into the shooting mode. To get the white balance controls, uh, go to the menu, find where the white balance menu is and press you will see a series of options auto the incandescent fluorescent direct sunlight flash cloudy shade then you have the choose color temperature and preset manual i'm going to shoot auto white balance in two different light setups one is a tungsten continuous light tungsten and a continuous light daylight white light setup uh, of course uh, we have our favorite model Alex, why don't you come in? Yeah, I'll carry that MacBook color chart. Of course, I cannot have any of the working lights uh, for the setup which is facing our model. So I'm going to switch this one off. Okay. Um, Alex, uh, as you can see, is wearing a white t-shirt and he is against a 
white backdrop and he's got this industry standard Macbeth color chart which has a series of you know pure pigments in it so any variations can be easily figured out you can actually see the variations in the video you must be seeing this in warm colors because I'm using a tungsten the white balance set for the video cameras are 5500 degree Kelvin which is daylight the tungsten light has much lower color temperature now I'm going to take a shot using the auto white balance mode in the camera okay here I go nice below the auto white balance mode there are as, as I told you there are various other settings this particular light is an incandescent light if you select the incandescent mode okay and take a shot you are likely to get a similar result okay and incandescent light operates at 3200 degree Kelvin to 2700 degree Kelvin and thereabouts so in the white balance setting there is a choose color temperature option so if you go there and if you know the exact color temperature of your setting in this case it's incandescent and there is nothing else on the screen I can actually key in the white balance uh, temperature value which is 3200 and uh, take another shot and you will see a similar result here so auto incandescent uh, preset and manually keying in the color temperature value all will get you a similar or comparable result now to the white light so the next setup is a white light uh, 5500 degree Kelvin is the color temperature of this particular light source um, I'm shooting in auto mode this light is supposed to mimic the daylight okay and uh, yep yeah, there it is and since it is daylight I can also go to the direct sunlight setup in the white balance menu and I'm going to see how it's going to work out oh very nice and it is 5500 degree Kelvin so you have the other option going to the Kelvin and changing it into 5500 degree Kelvin so there's not too much of a difference this is exactly the way the camera behaved in the previous occasion I want to show you something else that will happen in the camera if you dial in a wrong white balancing setup this is white light okay and I'm going to tell the camera that uh, this is not white light and this is incandescent which means the light temperature is 3200 that's how he will understand this light as okay I'm going to shoot the same image yeah as expected you've technically fooled the camera instead of telling the cameras the camera that it is a white light you told the camera that it is warm light so he made the necessary corrections and now you have a blue light in front this is the same thing will happen if you put the incandescent light and tell the camera this is this white light he will make it really really warm okay so uh, that's how the white balance behave it's, it's garbage in garbage out you put the right setup in and you will get the right kind of image uh, out so it's very important that you dial in the right white balance setting or the color temperature setting in your camera to get the right colors out so this is about two continuous light source let's see how it's going to behave with a flashlight okay flashlight is supposed to be white and it's supposed to be a 5500 equivalent to a 5500 degree Kelvin daylight okay so let's try and do the same exercise with a flashlight now we have the flash um, AD600B uh, TTL flash and uh, auto white balance setup 
okay and yes i can see it it's balanced right since flash is supposed to have a color temperature which is equivalent to a bright daylight uh, it should technically work properly even at the daylight setup so let's take a look at uh, the daylight setup direct sunlight okay and okay so we have the direct sunlight setup yeah looks very similar and uh, they also offer uh, a flash setup okay let's do the flash okay flash setup and it too uh, seems uh, very correct now 5500 degree kelvin is the color temperature of a white flash choose color temperature select 5500 degree kelvin and i'm going to do a shoot here okay and that too seems to be correct now let's key in a wrong color temperature let's tell the camera that uh, it is 6500 degree kelvin and see what happens okay it started warming up the uh, color because it is compensating for the excess blue which 6500 is supposed to bring in um i have let me increase it to 7500 flash and you can see the color shifting and the image is becoming warmer and warmer because for the camera this light is very blue 7500 degree kelvin is very blue so the camera is going to compensate and going to going to add a lot of warmth into the color to get your white right uh, what happens if you add more warm into an already white light this is white we have only fooled the camera by saying that it is 7500 so that 2000 degree difference is added into the image as warm light um, as a compensation so in the white balance setup what is left is uh, of course fluorescent since fluorescent lamp is not immediately available to us i'm not uh, doing that exercise with uh, this camera but uh, let me tell you that if you have a fluorescent lamp as your light source uh switch the white balance setup into a uh, fluorescent lamp light setup and uh, shoot and you will get your whites correct we got out of the studio to do some testing in daylight the sun had gone down a bit it was about 4:30 in the afternoon uh first is white balance in auto then let's switch to daylight skin is a little warm here the reason is you know the sun is beginning to set now the next is manually keying in 5500 degree kelvin nice it's a little warm again so let's try a 4500 degree kelvin which is let's say equivalent to an afternoon sun i'm just guessing right the white is white and the skin is brilliant okay let's move on to a shade since there are different types of shade and different types of cloudy conditions that you will encounter in real life i would recommend you stay with the auto setting because the other setting can give you other presets can give you undesired results sometimes so we saw how to use in camera white balance setups to get an accurate white balance was it that simple I think it was simple and straightforward but not all setups are so easy ask the wedding photographer he will tell you the kind of complex situations that he get into the, the the kind of complex situation that he encounters on a daily basis um there are 10000 different types of lights on each location in those places these kind of straightforward setups may not help you much there you will require another set of tools to kind of get an accurate white balance in your camera which we will find out in the next segment of the same video hope this video was useful if it is so please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing the channel and sharing it forward 
we also would like to hear from you so please use the comments column below and i will be more than happy to interact with you and the part two of this video is going to follow up soon so bye for now